Dear friends, welcome uh, to a new program. Uh, it has been a it has been a wonderful time of um, working together again for a new series in our verdict of science is creation. Um, I said wonderful. Okay, it just it pops me up with a, an interesting title. You've shown me um, eighth wonder. Ida is not related to whom humans claim scientists. Well, now, okay, we know there were seven wonders. Mm -hmm. I thought there were eight. I mean, That's me. in the ancient world. And, and, right? me, <laughs> me. and Ida should have been the ninth one. But well, Ida was announced um, in, the, in the start of 2009 to coincide with Darwin's anniversary, okay. and Ida was supposed to be the superb, the best, the eighth wonder of the world as a missing link between ape-like creatures and humans. That's who Ida was. Okay. Um, when you say missing link, mm -hmm. okay, uh, if the theory of evolution is such a tidy, classified, uh, wrapped, see it all through, geological, <laughs> column clean, whatever, um, continuity, okay, what's, what's missing? Well, Ida was obviously claim to be the proof the the last bit in the jigsaw puzzle now to to help people understand this as they celebrated darwin's 200th anniversary of his birth 150th anniversary of his book i'm reminded because of this the title you read about the missing link right that this phrase goes all the way back to darwin who hoped that given an, you know, another century of research, they would find the bits that he couldn't find. Mm -hmm. And to quote Darwin, basically, if you read his chapter on geology, he says, most assuredly, the fossils do not show slow transition from one to another. Mm -hmm. right? And he hoped that the reason was, well, we just haven't done enough research. Mm -hmm. We haven't dug up enough rocks. Give us time, give us more rocks, and we'll find the evidence that ape-like creatures have slowly turned into people. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's now 200 years since Darwin was born, 150 years or so since his book was published, and Ida was announced at the start of 2009 as the final bit in the jigsaw puzzle. Okay, she was supposed to be the 2009 missing link. She's okay. well. Let's let's be honest. She was announced in 2009. She was actually found back in the 1980s. What? <laughs> <laughs> now this is what most people don't appreciate: that scientists, as well as entrepreneurs, know how to promote something, right? Most you, people. You, you mean sell? Something? Sell, ah. yeah, they, they, they know how to publicize their finds. What would be the point of announcing Ida in 1984 when there were 10 other missing links that are supposedly being okay. found? Too much competition. Yeah. But if you wait till all the media has focused on Charles Darwin, then you can up the price of this fossil because it was all about somebody who'd purchased a fossil, it had been for sale. Mm -hmm. And in 2009, with the celebration of Darwin's birthday, Ida, who was found in Germany in the Messel Shales, right, was worth a lot more than she was in 2008. So they just preserved the wonder for so many years, or what? 26 years, basically. Yeah. Uh, it's been kept as a, you know, as a collector's item, and then announced in 2009. So I, you know, I don't want to sound sarcastic, but scientists, as well as everybody else, knows that there is a right time to promote something if you want more dollars for it, right? Mm -hmm. And so Ida, well, what does your headline say there off that um, internet item from yesterday? This one, the yeah. eighth wonder, Ida is not re related to humans, claim scientists. Okay, so six months after Ida was revealed to the world yeah. on the BBC with spectacular effects, Sir David Attenborough, you've heard of him? Right, he is the voice of the BBC nature programs. Mm. He has brought in 
to announce we have just found the missing link. You know, we have just finally proved that he's an ardent evolutionist, mm. an anti-Christian, an anti-creationist, a very prestigious, very well presented person, mm. right? And he's brought on to announce Ida. And now the item tells us six months later, no matter what he said, no matter what was announced on the BBC, Ida is definitely not a missing link. Do you know what she's turned out to be? A missing pink. No. <laughs> no, no, no. If you <laughs> go to Africa or some parts of yeah. the world, you have sort of like monkey-like creatures. They've got thumbs on their yeah. fingers and thumb, some, thumbs on their hands and thumbs on their toes, and they walk along on branches. And if you look at the fossil of uh, Ida that was dug out of the Messel Shales in Germany and announced in February of 2009 as the missing link, she turns out to be having a long tail that looked like it stood upright, her stomach contents are well preserved, her body is even in really good shape. So she was buried really quickly mm -hmm. and she's got thumbs on her hands mm -hmm. and thumbs on her feet. So she never was a human. And okay. what turns out to be is she just looks like a dead lemur. Right? Yeah, that's now, what I wanted to yeah, say. Because I knew you wanted to sit on the oh. tip of your tongue there, right? But the lemurs are still here. Yeah. Right? And so Ida has turned out to be nothing more than just a long lost ancestor for the modern lemurs who show evidence that despite the theory of evolution, they actually haven't evolved. They've turned into lemurs, mm -hmm. right? So they started as some kind of lemur-like creature, mm -hmm. and they've ended as some kind of lemur-like creature. So just for the last time, read that headlines again so folks know that you're not making up and I'm not making it up. I'm well, what did the scientists say? Eighth wonder, Ida is not related to humans, claim scientists. Okay, Plural. now it's really important that people appreciate that mostly you never get to hear the retractions. Yeah, this is why I wanted to ask you. If Sir David Attenborough <clears throat> popped up with big trumpets and mm -hmm. you know fireworks announcing the missing links have been or whatever, was he the one to come back from BBC and saying, "Well, I just blew it"? Well, I'm I'm waiting for Sir David to get up on the BBC and say, "I'm sorry, folks, I was wrong." I don't actually expect it to happen uh -huh. because we've provided Sir David with lots of evidence for creation, which he blatantly ignores. Mm. He is so blindly evolutionist and antagonistic to creationism. Mm. But, but you can keep watching the BBC and hoping and waiting to see Sir David get up there and say, we were wrong. Okay. But you see, Ida's just one in a long list of things yep. that are supposed to be yep. in our intermediates. You've heard of Neanderthal? Yes. Okay, what do you know about Neanderthal? Well, Neanderthal, uh, they were found in Neanderthal in Germany. Okay, so Ida is German, Neander is German. Yeah. Okay, good. So they're both found in Germany, and Ida lasted six months as a missing link. Neanderthal man lasted quite a bit longer, right from the middle 1800s through to the 1950s, right, mm. before it was removed from the Natural History Museum as our missing link, because what they discovered was it really wasn't a half ape, half man. It was a human being who'd been subject to vitamin D deficiency. So to, which sort of rickets? Rickets, yes. It had produced deformed bones. So instead of being halfway up, it was halfway down. I should be some sort of Neanderthal. I remember my parents told me I was taken to the Black Seashores for several years because I was starting to develop rickets. Mm -hmm. So. I was turning into a Neanderthal, but well, I was you would have if you were If you were growing up, you yep. see, what, <clears throat> what Ricketts does, if you don't get enough vitamin yes. D, vitamin D governs where your bones deposit mm -hmm. calcium. Mm -hmm. So if you're an adult, it's not a serious problem. But mm -hmm. if you're a child mm -hmm. and you're growing that way and gravity is pushing this way, if your bones are soft, here's oh. what happens. The top of your skull flattens out, your eyebrow ridges pop out, your, your jaw gets longer, 
your arms hang longer and your legs get shorter and bow out. Thank you, Mum. Right, so you Did can a good job. you can really thank your mum, right? Yep. And in in many cold countries or c cities, was your city covered in smoke much of the time? Lots well, of industry and fires. Well, and it was uh, known to be the most polluted, one of the most polluted in the whole Central Europe. Okay, well that's why you were taken to the Black Sea because you didn't get much sunlight. Mm -hmm as a child and mm -hmm. over in the Black Sea it's much less polluted, mm -hmm. much more sunshine, you can get your vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Of course these days you can just duck down to the pharmacist or the chemist mm -hmm. and get some vitamin D mm -hmm. and it will stop rickets but straight away. But that is not organic as the sun is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's much much cheaper to stand out in the sunshine. So Neanderthal mm -hmm. has also gone that way. But did you hear about the, um, the one that was just announced a few weeks ago, the latest missing link? It's replacing Ida even oh, now. Oh, hang on, hang on. It has a, an, a, an, an, it's Ida, and he was, uh, she was, R-D. R-D, that's right. R-D-D. So you're no. very good. It's really short for Ardipithecus. Uh -huh. Okay, Pithecus is Latin as in ape, right? So Ardipithecus, Ardipithecus. is now our supposedly 4.2 million year old ancestor to show that ape-like creatures evolved into human okay, beings. hang on. You said what? Four? About four and a half million years. Okay, or so. because uh, I can recall. Can I get back to Ida? Sure. Okay, it says that U.S. paleontologists dismiss initial claims about a 47 million year old fossil. Yes. Now, what's like. Well, this that's, is, a, that's a big. That's span. supposed to be 10 times older than the newest one. Yeah. But what's interesting is if you have a look at the diagrams they're showing, um, then. Ardi has yes. something in common with Ida. Okay. She's got thumbs on her hands yes. and thumbs on her feet. And the picture they released first shows Ardi standing upright on a branch. Now, Romulus Campan doesn't stand too well on branches because no. he's got toes on his feet. He walks very well, but he doesn't walk very well on thin branches. No. Ardi is pictured with thumbs on her feet holding on. Is it her again? Well, we can call her her or he. it really doesn't matter at the moment. But what is intriguing is that if you have a creature that has thumbs on its feet, then it's not really in any connection with us at all because we've got two feet with five toes on each okay. and we don't hang on to the branches very well with our toes. Okay. Artie is pictured standing upright trying to look like you and me but nevertheless holding on to the branches okay. with her hands okay. and her thumbs. Mm -hmm. And you know one of the things that follows if you've got thumbs on your feet? Uh, you need two people to get you done. You you know, give up, yeah. give up, right. I'm what sorry. You, what happens is that if you've got four hands, yeah. you can only stand upright for a little time. Well, because yeah. hands yeah. are very good for holding, yeah. right? I mean, shake my hand there, right? Now, monkeys can do that with their feet. They can shake all four at the wow. same time if they <laughs> like, right? So the reality is hands are good for holding. So you and I could hold onto branches with our hands, yes. but we can't do it with our feet. Yes. Feet are designed to take stress in the opposite way. Feet are good for walking. Yeah. So if you have four hands, you don't usually spend much time standing upright on two legs because uh -huh. there's too much strain mm -hmm. on your, your, your bottom or your lower limbs, right? Yeah. So therefore, most creatures with four hands stand upright a very short period of time, and most of the time they spend holding on to branches of the trees. Mm -hmm. So I think we could say, despite the publicity that's been associated with Ardi, she's going to go very quickly the same way as Ida and Neanderthal. She's just too different. Would you please just wrap us up a short history of the once wonderful missing link half way through the year failed missing link and give us mm -hmm. some names because we uh, have quoted a bit uh, Mr. Attenborough, but mm -hmm. we, I still remember my childhood. Okay, you mentioned Neanderthal, um, uh, so Lucy's, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Do, you, do we have any other ladies? Well, basically. Out in the bones? Basically, what you find usually is 
missing links are announced with great spectacular release on the front page of the paper and then 30 years later you might find a little five line mm -hmm. statement withdrawing it. Mm -hmm. Definitely true for IDA in 2009 mm -hmm. but IDA was found remember we said in the 1980s yeah. Ardi is announced with big spectacularness in 2009. Ardi was found in 1992, right? So she's not new at all. It's just that this is the year to announce your finds because there's money out there. There's there's the press attention, and you mentioned Lucy, yeah. right? Now it's intriguing that earlier this year in the magazine Nature. David Attenborough, the guy who announced Ida and who we're yet waiting to announce he was wrong, right? David Attenborough was asked, why is teaching evolution more important than ever? And he hit the nail on the head. From an evolutionist perspective, he said, quote unquote, because of the influence of the Bible's book of Genesis. In other words, he knows what this conflict, what these missing links are really out there to achieve. If you want to get rid of Genesis, if you want to get rid of the influence of the Bible, you have to give us some missing links to prove evolution, because otherwise we're hanging up there in the trees with, with nowhere to fall if we fall out of the trees. Mm -hmm. So David Attenborough and the others are really promoting evolution in order to get rid of what? Of God. Of God. Yeah. That's really what they want to get rid of, someone who will hold them accountable. Now, you asked about Lucy. Yeah. What's intriguing is there's a connection between Ardy and Lucy. Do you know what it was? No. For a free trip to Australia? One way? Two ways? Uh, well, rather for two ways. Uh, <laughs> With a wife and children? Phone help? Phone help? Ah, no. Well, no phone help. What you'll discover is that the world of anthropologists releasing these is a fairly small group, right? They know what they're after, they know what they achieve, and over and over again the same sorts of names keep showing up. So the man who reconstructed Artie's hip was the same person don't who reconstructed me. Lucy's hair. Yeah, don't tell me. I know who is it. Is it again Richard Leakey? No, Richard Leakey's a discoverer, right? Good. Richard Leakey is the man whose grandfather went to Africa as a missionary. Okay. Dabbled in evolution, abandoned Christianity in the end, and now his grandson Richard is an ardent atheist. That is the influence of evolution. Okay. That's what David Attenborough's got to. Mm. But the connection between Ardy and I, uh, and, Ardy Lucy. and Lucy, is that Professor Lovejoy from Kent State University reconstructed both their hips. Now you remember what I said about Ardy? She's yeah. pictured standing upright with her feet holding on to a branch. Yeah. And if you're going to make a creature stand upright, then the angle at which its legs join its hips is different from a creature that spends most of its time, you know, on all fours. Yeah. Because it will spend its life with a, a, a right angle where the bones from the legs join yeah. the hips, right? Yeah. Whereas you and I, our legs are straight underneath us. So the, the ball joint where our leg joins our hip will be at a different angle than a creature who stands at right angles mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So the man who reconstructed Lucy's hip is the same one who reconstructed Artie's. Mm -hmm. Now would you like to guess how many times he actually put Artie's hip together in order to get the one that's pictured in the science releases? For a free trip to Australia? No, no, we're, we've cancelled all the trips now. You lost that competition. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. Mm -hmm. Okay, no. well, okay. I'll help you then. At the least answer. more than once. Uh, well, the answer is four, he's up to his 14th reconstruction. 14. Which should, of course, tell you that he's guessing. Because why didn't he use the 13th? How yeah. about the 15th? Yeah. Right? Why not the 20th? Yeah. Uh, you see, most people don't appreciate when you dig up fossils, they don't come with a picture that says, yeah. Hi, here am I. I'm Artie. This is what I look like. What you've got is a paleontologist who's got some sort of kudos with the, the world's experts and he's got a prejudice, a bias. He wants evidence to get rid of God. Okay. Right? I've said it bluntly, he would say he's looking for evidence for evolution. But really, it, it's, it's he wants God out of the picture and his best way is to make this ape-like creature as human-like as possible. Now, the interesting thing is the same Professor Lovejoy reconstructed Lucy's hip. 
Now, you're an ex-musician, right? Well, not uh, an ex-musician. Well, okay, you're a musician. You an ex-musician. You used oh, to play, um, you know, in the rock sort of arena. Oh, yeah, that one. Okay. Now, you're ex-that, okay? Yeah, now, I you're a, a Christian guy. Now, when you have a think about Lucy, do you remember a Beatles song that featured Lucy? Lose? LSD. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Diamonds. Now, that ah. was the song that was playing uh, in the camp when these guys got those bones to put together. Oh, really? So Lucy is actually named after a pagan song by the Beatles who were at that time getting into the drug scene and into the, you know, into the uh, Eastern mysticism, etc. So there's a connection there. But Professor Lovejoy is the man who I watched... And I, I keep telling people, I've never read this in print, but I've got it on video. I captured it, right? I couldn't believe that he would do this. He said, when we first found Lucy, her hip was like a chimpanzee. And I thought, well, if you found a creature whose hip's like a chimpanzee, it's probably a... Chimpanzee. Chimpanzee, right? That would be... The, three, the, three, four, one. No. The first thing a scientist should actually say, that because our, our rule in science is very simple. It comes from a, a, a gentleman philosopher by the name of Occam. It's mm. called Occam's it's Razor, because we've discovered one thing. Truth is usually the, the simplest, simplest explanation, right? It's lies that get complicated. <laughs> so what you find is that the, the, the hip was like a chimpanzee. And then as we watched... He reconstructed it and used an angle grinder to grind the ball to get the right angle and said, there, it's now a minute you have hip. And I thought, if he did that in a court of law to evidence, the police would lock him up as well. But in geology, you get away with it, right? I just can't believe. No, I couldn't believe it either, I so mean, I'm there's glad. There's many people who know that. No, but you can actually, you know, if you can get a copy of the program that was aired on Nova, you can see him actually doing that. I just can't it's unbelievable. Yeah. But this is the same man who's reconstructed the hip for Artie. So it tells you that truth is not their primary concern. Mm. It's like David Attenborough. The reason we need to teach evolution is because of the Bible's influence of the book of Genesis. Okay. Right? And so that's the motivation that's going behind all of these missing links. So in 2009, why do you think they're promoting these new missing links again? Well, I guess of the, the Darwin year. Yeah, it's not only the Darwin year. It's not only the fact that money is there. They have that agenda. We have to get rid of God. Mm -hmm. Attacking the book of Genesis is the most successful way. You, you notice one thing? They never attack the New Testament. Mm -hmm. They don't. No, because no. they know that the Bible is structured. Yeah. And if you get rid of the bottom yeah, book, yeah. then the whole yeah. lot falls down. You know, like the old proverbial yeah. house of cards? Yeah. Pull this one out and yeah, right? crumbles. the whole thing crumbles. And so that's what their aim is really about. Mm -hmm. Okay, sip your water. Uh, and uh, uh, from our previous programs and uh, the many uh, hours we've spent together uh, with me translating you in Hungary and Romania uh, in front of several audiences, uh, one name actually popped up as being foundational to this sort of Edinburgh thinking, as you just said, he bluntly claimed uh, why would be teaching evolution so important is just to make sure that the Bible's teaching about Genesis would be disbalanced. I mean, he does it by purpose. But he's not the first one. He just continues some sort of, uh, an sort of really um, foundational and uh, um, a scientific earthquake caused by the one who was at the foundation of Charles Darwin's thoughts, mm -hmm. um, uh, the father of the geology. It's Charles Lyell. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Right. Why, 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 why? Actually, nothing changes. The, the pattern he just set as to get rid of. Could you just help us through? Sure. And, yeah? Charles Darwin is on record because he wrote a letter to his son George. Okay. And his son George was thinking of publishing an article which was anti-church, anti-Christian, anti-religion, right? And Darwin urged him to caution. And he, he then said, look, Charles Lyell is convinced that he has demolished people's confidence in Noah's flood by not attacking the Bible directly. In other words, 
silently, subtly try to bypass it, undermine it, um, but don't publicly come out and attack Noah's flood mm -hmm. or the Bible story of the ark mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. do it subtly and mm -hmm. insidiously, right? And so what you find, 2009 announce all of these missing links. Mm -hmm. As if they're new, yeah. When they're 26 and 24 yeah. years yeah. old, right? Yeah. So announce them as if they're new. The public swallows it. Yeah. Never put in a retraction, even though they are forced by the yeah. scientists. But the scientists can't get the front page yeah. of the newspapers. Yeah. Yeah. David Attenborough got the front page of the newspapers, right? So Charles Lyell is also on record as saying, "My aim is to free science from Moses." Moses. Now, Mr. Theologian, you're familiar with Moses. What books in the Bible is he associated with? The first, first five books. The first five mm -hmm. books and Psalm 90, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to have to correct you yeah, there, but it really is. That most people miss that. Yeah, now, in Genesis chapter 1, and we've mentioned it over and over again, it said we were made in the image of who? God. We didn't descend from the apes. We have descended from Adam, mm -hmm. quite literally, because Adam was made in the image of God, God, and we sinned. And the whole history of man from then on is a descent mm -hmm. from perfection. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, now, in previous programs, we've talked about the volume of your skull capacity. But what really intrigues me is that when you go and you get all of the skulls and you line them up, and just last year, um, you know, one of the, the, the famous professors from London University College, Professor Steve Jones, was asked, is human evolution over? I'm sure the interviewer on the BBC had looked around, you know, we can't see anything evolving. You haven't seen it, I haven't seen it, is it over? And the interviewer's question and said, you know, we've got bigger brains now, is that trend going to continue? And Professor Jones said, well, it's true that we've got bigger brains than chimpanzees, but we've not got as big a brains as Neanderthals. So what I did was get our staff to go and get the cast, the accurate scientific cast, and these worth a fortune, by the way. And if folks want to see all this, just go to creationresearch.net, click on the web museum, and look for the, the slideshow on Neanderthal mm -hmm. and Cro-Magnon. And so we got the skulls, and we actually measured the capacity of their brain space. And you know what's interesting? Cro-Magnon, which is just Latin for big hole, mm -hmm. he was found in the cave. He's your traditional caveman mm -hmm. who painted mm -hmm. on the walls, right? He has a brain capacity of 1,600 cubic centimetres on average. Mm. Neanderthal, deformed as his skull might have been, has a brain capacity of 1,400 you know, cu cubic centimetres, and you and I have a brain capacity of about 1,200 cubic centimetres. So the fossil evidence shows us that we used to have 400 cubic centimetres more brain space. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not evolution that way. It's degeneration this way. Mm -hmm. And if you look at your Bible, think carefully of the evidence that backs that up. Now, Mr. Theologian, what's Noah famous for? For the flood. Uh, no, 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 he's not famous for the flood. God's famous for the flood. Yeah. Noah's famous for building what? An, an ark. Well, an well ark. he's famous for the flood. Okay. But been, yeah, okay. Through which Noah was saved. Yes. God gave him the instructions, but what's interesting, God said, this long, that yeah. wide, that high, one door, one window. Yeah, that's all. And Noah said, okay, and did it. Uh -huh. Now, you can't even build a paper boat that floats, true? True. <laughs> <laughs> and yet Noah, who'd never been to boat school, could build an ocean liner. Yeah. So he had a greater skill than you and I have in the modern age, and it was all about building an ark for being saved. Mm. Which brings, of course, to the final end of our program for this series in which you have a tremendous revelation in your Bible that Jesus is the real ark, mm. right? Mm. The only way which you and I, who have degenerated, can actually be saved from the consequences of our sin. Okay, we began our program, this one, saying the, the eighth wonder, Ida, okay? We just came to the conclusion that Ida is not either in the eighth, nor is she any wonder. Are there still wonders, Mr. Mackay? Well, the real wonder is the fact that God still loves us. Oh, That's the God. real wonder, that God does love us despite That's our the real sin. Wonder. And that he actually did come to this planet Earth 
in order to like Noah's ark, Noah's ark just saved him from the water, but Jesus' death is the ark to save us from eternal consequences of sin in a horrendous place called hell, and he saved us for a new heavens and a new earth in which we'll be just dwelling where righteousness dwells. And I'm looking forward to that, just to seeing him face to face and actually talking to Noah too and asking him, Amen. what was it like having two <laughs> kangaroos and two dinosaurs? And I'm going to enjoy that time. Amen. Can we say as being the last word of this program that how wonderful Jesus is? Amen. Amen. May God bless you. See you all.